Today, we're gonna to dive into R3, which is a new re-implementation of reactive extensions for c -sharp. In a nutshell, R3 is the observer pattern on steroids. R3 replaces UniRx, but you don't need to know anything about UniRx or reactive extensions to watch this video. And we're gonna cover all the essentials with simple examples of how you can use R3 in your projects. While UniRx was just for Unity, R3 supports many platforms, including Godot. By the end of this video, you should have all the basic concepts down and be ready to start using R3 as a more powerful event system in your projects. Let's start by looking at a common scenario in game dev where we have to capture multiple clicks or key presses within a certain amount of time. For example, I have some basic code here that will play a UI particle effect when I click two times within two seconds. When I click once, nothing happens. But instead, if I were to double click, it meets the criteria in the UI particle effect plays. Let's take a look at how I'm doing this and then how we can use R3 to do this much more efficiently. I've got a pretty straightforward script here. It's about 50 lines long and most of the action happens in the update method. Every frame I'm listening for a left click. If I get one, I'm gonna capture the current time and then start comparing between what I've registered as my first click time and right now. And we can determine whether or not that happened within two seconds. If it did, we're gonna play the particle effect and then I'm gonna start a throttle coroutine, which will just wait for the two seconds and then reset everything ready to go again. Now, of course, there's many different ways you could go about this. Let's take a look at how we would do this with R3. First, I'm gonna select this coroutine, everything in the update method, and these private variables. I'm gonna wipe them all out because we're not gonna need them anymore. Instead, what we're gonna do is create an observable stream in our start method, and we're going to subscribe to it. But before we do that, let's add one using statement here using R3. Then I'm gonna create an empty start method, and I also want to have a member variable where I'm gonna hold my subscription. All subscriptions in R3 inherit from iDisposable. We're gonna dive more into subscriptions and observables in a little bit. For now, let's set up this example. One of the ways to create an observable stream is with a factory method from the observable class. So here, I'm gonna use observable.everyUpdate to give us an observable that will run every frame. It should be no surprise that this library, just like Unitask, takes full advantage of the player loop system. So now we have an observable, we know when we want it to observe things, but what are we observing? So this is where we start to use operators. We can use the where operator to capture a left mouse button click during each update. But we don't just wanna know if the button was clicked or not, what we really wanna capture is a time interval. And we wanna chunk the clicks or group them into sequences of two with an overlap of one click. So that means the first argument here of two specifies the chunk size, the second argument, one, specifies the overlap. How many elements from the previous chunk should be included in the next chunk? Now let's filter this down even further so that we're only looking at the ones where the interval, the total seconds of the interval was less than or equal to two. We can use the throttle first operator to prevent us getting more double clicks within the two seconds. The same thing that coroutine was doing earlier. And now that we've created the type of stream that we want to react to, we actually need to subscribe to it and do something. So here, let's just debug something out to the console and actually play our particle effect. The subscribe method returns our subscription, which we can store into a variable. And when we're all finished, we need to do some cleanup because it inherits iDisposable in our onDestroy method. Let's make sure that we actually dispose of it. Now, there's a few other ways to dispose of subscriptions, and we're going to look at those later too. Now, I know that probably seems overwhelming if you're new to reactive programming. We're gonna go through all the concepts in a few moments. For now, let's make sure that this is actually working. So Hot Reload did its thing in no time here. And of course, when I hit play, now I should be able to double click. And of course, it plays the particle effect and we see a message. Next, I wanna show you how to install R3 into your project because it's a little bit different than normal. And then we're gonna walk through all the main concepts of R3 and reactive extensions and how we can use them in Unity with examples. So R3 was built to work with many different platforms, not just Unity, so Godot and many others. And that means that the main R3 package is actually distributed not through the Unity packaging system, but instead through NuGet, which if you've never heard of that before, is a popular package manager for .NET that provides all kinds of tools that makes it easy to share and reuse code libraries. Now it's pronounced NuGet, not Nugget like Chicken Nugget. And we actually need to get a special version of NuGet for Unity, and we're going to grab that from GitHub. 
I'll put links to everything that you need into the video description. From the GitHub page, you'll be able to get the URL that you can paste into your package manager. So you can come up to the plus icon, select install package from Git URL, paste that in, click install. It only takes just a few seconds. Once new Git for Unity is installed, you'll get a new menu item. Up at the top beside window, you'll see new Git. Select the first one, manage new Git packages. This will bring you up a new little window where you can start selecting packages you want to import through this package manager. So in the search box, just type R3 and you'll find it right away. It'll show up here. There it is, the third on the list. You can either click the box to select and then install anything that you've selected, or you can just install packages one by one. So I'll install R3 here. This is even faster to install and close up this window. Now at this point, we've only installed the core R3 library that works for all platforms, but we need to bring in the Unity specific stuff. The URL for importing the Unity specific stuff you can find on the SciSharp R3 GitHub README page. Just paste this in, install, and then you're actually ready to go. You have everything you need now to use R3 in Unity. Now, there are some additional things that you could bring in that would make life a little bit easier, depending on what you're working on. One of those things is another library written by the same author. If we come back into Manage NuGet Packages, we can import the Observable Collections package here. This is a general library for observable collections. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. We might get into this by the end of the video if there's enough time. I'm going to bring it in now. And I just want to point out that these packages we're bringing in through the NuGet Package Manager actually show up here under your Assets folder. They're in a subfolder of called Packages. And you can see here that now I've imported the main R3 library, Observable Collections, and there are several dependencies here as well. As a final step, and again, this is totally optional, I'm going to also bring in Unitask. To be totally clear, Unitask is not required by R3, and it's not required for reactive programming. But my personal opinion about it is if I'm going to bring in R3, I might as well bring in Unitask because I'm probably going to use both. So we're ready to go. Let's start talking about the fundamentals. The most challenging part of learning R3 is shifting your mindset. You need to let go of the usual imperative, stateful programming habits and start thinking in a new paradigm. Visualize data as a sequence of values evolving over time, not just as static snapshots. Event buses or typical click events are already asynchronous streams where you can observe and trigger side effects. Reactive programming takes this concept to the next level. Anything can be treated as a stream, variables, user input, properties, caches, and more. For example, imagine your game's score or a health bar as a data stream, much like a series of player actions. You can listen to it and react accordingly. A stream is a sequence of ongoing events ordered in time. An observable is just a type of stream that we actually observe. Now, anything can be an observable. Let's go back into code and have a look at an example. I've stripped down this class so that we can start almost from scratch, but I've added a cancellation token source so that I can use that red X button in my GUI to actually cancel any asynchronous operations. So I think the easiest way to understand this is that I have that big coin button at the bottom of my screen and I have a reference to it. So why don't we connect up to its on click event? We can use the method as observable to turn that click into an actual stream we can observe. This takes in an optional cancellation token, and then we can subscribe to this observable stream of clicks. When our subscription, which is the observer in this paradigm, receives an event, let's play the particle effect. Now let's exercise a little bit of due diligence. We'll store this subscription in a variable, and that's so that we can dispose of it in the onDestroy method. So that's a very simple example of how we can turn just about anything into an observable stream and subscribe to it. Let's jump back into Unity. If I come back up to the top menu here under Window, you'll see I've got my Unitask tracker, but there's also now an observable tracker. And you can see I've got mine docked up here on the right hand side. This is very similar to the Unitask tracker we looked at a couple weeks ago. It has all kinds of features such as enabling the stack trace, auto reload, and so on. Notice after I hit play, it's now showing our observable up in that observable tracker. Very useful for debugging anything. R3 actually has quite a few shorthand methods for Unity. So here, where we were turning the onClick event into an observable, we can actually use a shorthand method onClick as observable. There are a lot of these helper extension methods that exist for anything that is a UGUI component or anything that extends Unity event. But let's see now how we can hook into a normal event, a normal C-sharp event. 
So I've made a second class here called player. It just has one action. The action gets fired anytime the player takes damage and publishes how much damage it took. So now in our start method, I can use another factory method from the observable class, which is called from event. And I want to do a type int. There are a lot of overloads for the from event factory method, but basically it needs to take in an add handler and a remove handler so that you actually get subscribed or unsubscribed from the C sharp event. Optionally, you can pass in a cancellation token. Then we can use our subscribe method to react when something happens. And instead of putting this into a variable, I'm going to use the convenient method add to and send in this. That means when this game object is destroyed, this subscription is going to get disposed of. Now down in my other subscription to the button click, let's just say whenever I click the button, I'll make the player take one damage. Now you might have noticed that Rider wasn't being very cooperative formatting my code the way I wanted it. If you run into this problem in Rider, you can select your code and use the context menu. Choose reformat and clean up and detect code style settings. That way you can save your preferences so it'll format it that way for you in the future. Okay, let's have a quick test here. Just make sure that everything's working as expected. I drag the player component on here. We need a reference in my example and that's it. Press play and I should be able to click the button and we should start seeing messages. So yes, our subscription is correctly reacting to the observable stream of events. Okay, let's move on to another concept, which is the subject. A subject is an observable that can have multiple observers. In R3, there are five types of subjects, and the one that you're probably gonna run into the most is the reactive property. Let's make two of these, one for current health, that will be of type int, and one is dead that will be Boolean. In our start method, we can set these up with some initial values. So let's say that our current HP, we'll just set it to be the max HP, and for our is dead, we'll just say false. But let's also create a subscription on the current HP so that whenever it changes, we can react and set is dead accordingly. Now let's come back to our other example code. Here we already have a reference to the player. So let's make another subscription so that we just output the HP every time that it changes. And let's also make one on the is dead reactive property so that we can say when is dead is true, we are going to actually disable my coin button so that we can't click it anymore. Then let's just change this take damage from taking one damage to actually something bigger like 99. So we should be able to reduce the player's health to a negative number within two clicks here. So you can see we've got a starting value already of 150 in the console. Take 99 damage, we're down to 51. Click it again, we're down to negative 48. And I can't click the button anymore. So that's you know working as expected again. Now, at this point, we've got a lot of subscriptions in this example script. So let's create an iDisposable as a class member. Then down in our start method, instead of using the add to extension method on all of these subscriptions, instead I'm just gonna put each of them into a variable, D1, D2, D3, and of course our subscription on the coin button is already put into a member variable subscription. Now we can take all these references to iDisposable and actually use the dispose.combine method to put them all together into one, let's call it disposable. And then this disposable, we only have to call once and we don't have to call it on destroy. We can call it anytime we want to. But you know, for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna replace subscription with disposable. And in fact, here we could include the cancellation token source as well because it also implements the iDisposable interface. There are a few other ways of handling multiple subscription iDisposables. I'm just gonna remove all the references that I made previously. Instead, what I'm gonna do is create a builder. So now, after each of my subscriptions, I can add these subscriptions directly into the builder. And after I'm done adding all the ones that I want, all I really need to do is call the build method on the builder and it's ready to go. And we can dispose of that in the same manner. Another thing you can do, and this is recommended if you're making a lot of subscriptions dynamically, is use a disposable bag. This works similar to the disposable builder, except you don't actually have to call a build method. You're just adding these subscriptions into the struct and it can be disposed of in the same way. So now we've kind of covered all the basics of R3, and you'll notice that it's not really any different than using the observer programming pattern. I think what really separates R3 from just a basic observer is operators. Now we saw operators a little bit at the beginning of the video. Let's dig into that a little bit more with a more complicated example. Okay, so just to have a quick overview of what we're going for here, I brought in my player controller from a couple videos ago. I've got a Cinemachine pre-look camera and I've put some collectibles around the scene. So let's take a look at how we can use R3 and a few operators to make this happen. 
Because we're going to be dealing with collisions, I'm going to bring in R3.triggers. And then I'm also going to expose a serializable reactive property. Serialized field doesn't work with reactive properties, but you can use this generic type instead. Now down in our start method, what I'm going to do is use this dot on collision enter as observable. Using this method will automatically add a component to this game object called observable collision trigger. You can do this for collision exit and collision stay. There's also a class that handles triggers. So at this point, all we have is an observable stream of collisions. Let's filter this down using an operator to find only the collisions where the game object has a tag of reward. Next, let's take what we've filtered and for each one, we're going to do something. And for now, that's just gonna be debug it out to the console. Next, let's use the select operator to actually reduce this down to just the vector three that is the actual hit point of the collision. So now we've filtered our stream a little bit. We've reduced it down to the information that we want. Let's subscribe. All I'm gonna do here is just debug out the collision point. Let's award the player 10 points. And of course, let's make sure that we actually dispose of this when we're finished with it. Now, it would be impossible to cover every single factory method and every single operator that exists in this library because there are hundreds of them. Now, my suggestion is head over to the GitHub repository and have a read through this list. Most of these make perfect sense, especially if you're used to link. However, there are some that might surprise you. For example, I have no idea what trampoline does. I'll be looking into that one later today. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, another thing I wanna do in here really quick is I'm just going to subscribe to the player's score and output that every time the score changes, just to make sure that it's working correctly. Now, we have two other classes involved in this whole thing. The first one is my example class from earlier, and we still have a lot of stuff going on in here, but let's add a little bit more. Now, this class was kind of monitoring a lot of things going on with the player and reporting on them and acting on them. So why don't we hook into the player's score, which we set up as a serializable reactive property. Every time the score is greater than zero, let's update the text in the UI. Optionally, we could play that particle effect again. We still have a disposable bag here, so let's just add this to that. Now, just for interest's sake, let's take a look at the collectible class. This is actually not very different. In fact, it's simpler than what we're doing in the player. On collision enter as observable, all I'm gonna do here is instantiate the effects that show that we hit it. I'm gonna play a little sound, and then we're gonna destroy this game object. And here, let's dispose of the subscription when the game object is destroyed. Okay, sanity check, make sure everything's working there. Looks good. Let's make sure that the coins are working here. Give it a couple clicks. Yep, perfect. Okay, so we've really only scratched the surface of R3 with this video, and I think we're gonna have to talk about it more because there's so much more you can do with it. I mean, there's a lot of advanced scenarios you can do. In fact, I bet you could build an entire game that would be completely reactive. So I think what I'll do is start planning for a more advanced video that will combine Unitask, Observable Collections, and R3 together to start looking at some more complex scenarios. So hit the like button if that sounds good to you, but that's as far as we're gonna go today. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Don't forget that we have a Discord server that you can join and I'll try and throw a related video up on the screen here so you can check that out if you're interested. Maybe I'll see you there.